Environmental DNA, or eDNA, is the genetic material that plants and animals shed into the environment. So a bit like genetic breadcrumbs that get left behind, humans and birds and fish are depositing DNA into the environment continuously, and we can now capture that and read that DNA. And it's not just the things we can see with our own eyes. So when we look at biological environments, we tend to go out and count how many birds we see or how many dolphins that we see. But there's layers of complexity that are in these biological systems from bacteria all the way through to mammals that you see. So in the genetic material that we look at, we're able to capture the vast sort of tree of life, if you like. Rivers are a good place to use eDNA, as anything upstream will leave genetic traces downstream. It's almost like a conveyor belt for eDNA and by taking a sample from a waterway you can collect the environmental DNA of all the species that are living within that ecosystem. Understanding the entire ecosystem of a river can help make better conservation decisions. It's important because food is vital to the survival of any of New Zealand's native species. If we take something like a pheo, a blue duck, it will only survive if you translocate it there, if its food source is there. So what insects are present in an ecosystem? And then we're into the, the tree of life and food webs. And that's the true complexity that sits behind it. By analysing samples from around Aotearoa, researchers have created a way to scientifically measure overall ecosystem health in a river. So what we've done when we've developed this index called the Tiki Index, which is a stream health quality index, if you like, is try and identify the things that are found in healthy rivers all the way to things that are only found in degraded rivers. We're able to determine where on that spectrum it sits, whether it's good, bad or average, and then we're able to determine where your particular sample sits on that, and indeed whether that sample is changing over time. Because of the relative simplicity in taking eDNA samples, the Environmental Protection Authority has been supporting community groups across Aotearoa to use eDNA as a tool to understand and improve the health of their local waterways. You do not need to be an expert to use eDNA testing and that's one of the wonderful things for community groups. It's very accessible for them to gain very scientific information about their environment. We have found that working with community groups has really lifted the bar for this technology as it's rolled out in New Zealand. It's all about accessibility and coming up with a solution that's empowering people to monitor the environment. We've been doing eDNA testing as part of our project to monitor the health of our rivers. It's given us knowledge that we now have at risk and declining species in our rivers and also given us a tool to engage with our community about the importance of the river regeneration work that we're doing as well. The species that we're most excited about finding in our river was uh, the short-jawed kokapu, which is an at-risk and declining fish species. That was really meaningful to me because I know that interventions that I make here now are helping down the stream. Because it picks up almost everything, eDNA can be used to detect the things we don't want in the environment, as well as those we want to save. There's so many applications of using environmental DNA technology. We're using it to look at whether endangered species are present but we also to look at whether invasive species are present there. We can use it to track water quality. There's many, many applications of environmental DNA. With Paco and Gabriel, we were able to work with communities in those areas and offer them tests to go back and retest in areas where they had tested prior to the cyclone and discover the impacts in those areas. One of the big things that was discovered was the lack of freshwater mussels where they had previously been. They also found invasive species such as the cord grass and brown trout that hadn't been there before. Community groups using eDNA can also provide an early warning system about new invasive species reaching our shores. The Mystery Creek Community Catchment Group did tests in that area and actually were the first to detect the golden clam, which is a pretty nasty species that is of huge concern. The golden clam's DNA was detected nine months before it was officially discovered. However, no process was in place to sound the alarm. It's just we hadn't converted the DNA barcode into an alert system, if you like. And it shows the potential about that. You know, we could have got a nine month head start. So we're really hopeful that in the future that samples taken from around New Zealand will be able to do earlier detection. The scientists hope eDNA projects continue to grow in popularity. 
strengthening an invaluable tool to protect our precious environment. We've de used over 16,000 samples across New Zealand. It's not out of the realms of possibility that every river, every year in New Zealand, could be looked at. We have grown a massive community of uh, budding eDNA experts. By giving them knowledge from the outset, they are able to continue to engage with the science. So we're in the middle of a biodiversity crisis globally, and New Zealand is not immune to it. If we can listen to nature effectively through environmental DNA and look at everything from the microbes to the mammals and everything in between, we're able to hopefully, and this is the goal of it, is make better decisions. And it's time for good decisions.